Final Fantasy. So I played an hour of World of Final Fantasy, and it was so bad, I just dropped it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not very good. Alex You're recommended right. it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like Pokemon, but dumber. And that's uh, really a feat. I don't want to spend today bashing it, so I'm going to talk about something else. So it was so bad that I just thought I need to play the best game of my life, and that's why I bought Elden Ring. And oh. I put a good 10 hours in now. So I started on Sunday, was not able to play all week. Uh, I was hung over from a staff party yesterday. So perfect opportunity to stay in and game all day. And then I played a little bit more this morning. I got 10 hours in a bandit class, level 30. I have just been loving exploring the world. It is an RPG lovers RPG. It is the most RPG RPG I think I've ever played. Now, this is Final Fantasy month, and I mean, to me, like, there are correlations here, although I'm not going to drag them. Uh, this really does feel, like I said, like an RPG to the fullest, and it just feels like such a game. Like, there's so much game to Elden Ring. And, you know, when you're starting off, like, it just, it makes you work for everything. I will say, the, the reason I'm really, I picked it too, and I trusted buying Elden Ring is uh, Spencer had talked about last time on the game talk about how it was really hard for him to get into Dark Souls until he played Elden Ring. And so I, I went with it. And for the record, I have tried Dark Souls, dropped it. And uh, I just did not feel confident in my ability in it. This one makes me feel more confident in my ability. Even though I can get absolutely wrecked by a guy on a horse within the first hour of the game, I can just go another direction. There's just so, like, the world is so massive. My biggest regret is actually just looking up information to talk about this game because I didn't have all the nomenclature ready to talk about. And I just saw the number of worlds and levels. And I'm kind of disappointed I did that because I really, I, it, it kind of takes me back to when you just feel like you get lost in a game because there's so much to do, but you never really feel lost. There's all of these like little, the these gates of light, I don't know exactly what they're called, but you can teleport there on the map. So even if like I go one area and then there's a great enemy or a, a beast, I guess, and I can't uh, take him down because I'm not skilled enough or I haven't leveled up enough or I, and, you know, I don't have the great equipment for it. I could just go to the other side of the map and try a different one. And there's so many remarkable, fantastic creatures in this world that it is just so memorable. I uh, I, I think back to last Sunday, um, you know, I think for the first couple of hours, it's just so much learning too about what am I doing in this game? You start, I started off with a dagger and a shield and I, I don't think I found much equipment for a while. And then I realized, oh, I've been using a dagger this whole time, like a little fricking knife. And so just recently I, I upgraded to a sword and it's made my game so much, uh, so much better. Like I really feel more equipped to take down enemies. Now the, it keeps going further. I didn't realize there was a smith in like this cathedral area that you can go to to upgrade the sword. And then there's these things called ashes of war that you can implement on the weapons in order to give them special abilities. And the more that you get the hang of like all the different mechanics, the more it opens itself up to you. Now contrast this with the Strangers of Paradise game with the Final Fantasy game I played recently, which is it's clearly souls like from, you know, what I I'm playing of this now. Okay, you know, big brain fuck here. But what I, what I don't appreciate about that game is that it's just overwhelming you with information. Like it's really just trying to tell you everything. Elden Ring tells you almost nothing. It's like you can figure this out. It almost believes in you to figure it out. And I, I think I just really like that. And, you know, there was, I, I felled my first great enemy last night, uh, it, I guess to progress the storyline. And it just felt like such an accomplishment because I think I had gone at that thing 20 times. <laughs> and I, 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 I did get better, I didn't get better. And you know, I went out and I grinded and then I, I leveled up my guy a little more. But I, I just learned the way to you like to parry, to roll, to strike and to distract. And it's, it's really such a satisfying experience in that way. I'll also say this, you know, I'm a big Zelda fan and one game I never got into was Twilight Princess. But one thing I think Twilight Princess promised was this epic horseback combat. 
And I don't think Twilight Princess really delivers on that front. That has scenes in the game where, yes, you're on a horse and they're on a hog. But this game maybe has some of the most satisfying steed combat that I've experienced in a game. You know, and it's it's real simple. You're on the steed, strike, strike, or you could do the heavy strike right, heavy strike left. And I use that a couple of times to take down enemies, like big enemies on the overworld. And I'm really enjoying it. There are a couple of things that like I still don't fully understand at about the 10 hour mark. And it's not that I don't understand them. Like I, I'm beginning to understand them, but like I'm at 10 hours. I have nothing invested in intelligence. I guess I got a pretty dumb character, um, but I, <laughs> I did buy a heal spell, but I don't have a wand or a staff and you need one to cast. And then also I, I felled some some like beasts or like the the death i don't even know the, he's like the tibia guy on the on the water he's like he's a representation of death and then you can go and you get like a summons but you can't use the summons if you don't have another like incantation or something or like the, uh, your faith level needs to be a certain height so like there are a bunch of stipulations that i think are like like it's kind of bizarre. It doesn't matter. I don't really need to summon skeletons, and I also don't need a health spell. You get. I have six flasks right now that I can use to regenerate at any time. Uh, it's just interesting to me that like it really puts a lot of pressure on you to build the type of character that you envision yourself running the game with. And so I I'm having a blast right now at at where I'm at, and I could definitely see myself finishing it before the year is up. The tragedy is, it's just like, and this is why I stopped Breath of the Wild, is because I didn't have time to just sink. And this is a sink time sink game. This is a game where you really feel like you're in the game, like you just like I I could play for an hour, sure, but I almost feel like I've done nothing and I want to keep going and I know I can't do that during the week. Mm -hmm. So this is almost like a weekend only game for me. But uh, I am really liking it. I'm glad I'm playing it. That's good. Yeah. All all transparency, I haven't played it yet. I think I'm the only one here now, which is funny. Um but like like Teddy was just saying, uh not because I don't want to play it, but because I want to only play it when I play it. <laughs> I I want to just be able to uh, jump into that and i was gonna ask you teddy because i know previously i know you've tried dark souls and i know i know previously we've tried uh, because i was playing you know talking alongside you when you're playing it we tried to get you to a point in bloodborne um as well um now kind of two questions for one like how would you compare this game to say a breath of the wild and does does playing the 10 hours of this game make you feel more confident in going back to something like like dark souls or bloodborne First, how do I compare it to Breath of the Wild? Uh, I think it's like Breath of the Wild in the middle fucking ages where knights and monsters are just, you know, you're really at their disposal. Like this game makes you feel you died. It says it in big, bold letters. It's almost like a Resident Evil game over, you know, like classic. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I think I really appreciate that, too, because like it really does make your deaths felt. Like there's an XP system and you can go back and, and you have to reclaim your, I, I don't know exactly what they're called. They're not souls. It's something else. And it's basically your currency Elden's. for the, for a, <laughs> your, yeah, your ring. El you El your elderberries. Rings, yeah. You're ruined. <laughs> elderberries. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but that's the currency for everything, you know, for, for weapons, for, for leveling up. And you don't want to lose that. Um, I don't really feel that as much in Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, I feel more explore. I don't feel more like <laughs> like the the real jeopardy of of being a nomad. Okay. I I'm perfect. So, I'm 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 going to stay. Oh oh oh. Your, your, the other question was what about uh, yeah like Dark Souls yeah like do you feel do you feel more? Which is funny because you're describing things in this game, and I'm like, oh, that's just Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah <laughs> yeah it's like because like, from you know, software though i mean which is funny because because right now i'm i'm replaying dark souls remastered and falling back in love with that game so yeah i, I just curious like like does does playing this up to this point now make you feel more confident in playing the older games uh i don't know um because I, I didn't play dark souls that long ago and i kept getting stuck at the same segment 
and maybe especially with Bloodborne, like those games have a very predetermined path for you to follow, at least of what I played. And uh, Elden Ring doesn't. And yeah, they do to a point. The Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Three and Bloodborne, especially, have they have predetermined paths, but they branch. The only, the, the only one that doesn't do it as well is two. Two, <laughs> two just kind of sends you on predetermined paths, and you don't really get the veer that much. But there's like intricacies in the Dark Souls and, and Bloodborne pathways that like you 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 know upon dying and re- replaying and the dying and replaying you start finding them you know as you play on more. Uh, yeah, I um, I by the time I was felling big enemies, I had really leveled my character up, and I feel like it kind of throws it in your face very early on in Bloodborne. Uh, Dark Souls, not so much. I haven't gotten far enough to tell you that. I would probably feel more confident with the the roll evades and the parry. Although I don't, I don't have a perfect parry down yet. I just kind of I understand the shield stamina system a little better. So we'll see. I'm not like as sold in like getting into souls, but I'm open minded. I would try them again after after Elden Ring. I'm not jumping to <laughs> go play them right now. All right. Well, let us know and me and Spencer will make you a jacket so you can join the club. Yeah. 